The weird and wonderful world of the reptile kingdom is on full display at Taronga. They range from the very familiar to the very alien in their appearance. And sometimes they're just downright confusing, like in this species case. Most people would see this little guy here and think straight away, well, that's a snake. In fact, this is the world's largest legless lizard, known as a Shelto pusig. This is our male Shelto pusig. This lizard is a subterranean species. Being underground, they can avoid predation and they can have a good supply of food. They have a ferocious appetite. The two we have here, they are hungry all the time, especially the big girl. If you have a look at his body structure, actually, you may see a line that runs all the way along his body. This is an expansion line. Gives them the ability to expand their body when they're having a deep breath or swallowing a large item of food. And it really is just skin, which is folded or concertinaed on itself to allow it to stretch out when it swallows something large or needs to take a deep breath. Not surprisingly, people often confuse legless lizards with snakes, but there are a couple of subtle differences. When he sticks out his tongue, he has a big, broad, fleshy tongue, not a forked tongue like a snake. So that's one of the big differences right there. The other difference is he's got ear holes. So he has external ear openings. No snake in the world has external ear openings. OK, this is our big female shelter pusic. One of the first things you'll notice is the different in colour, and she's also a fair bit bigger. She's probably one to 200 grams heavier than our male shelter pusic. With a male and female in their collection, Taronga's reptile team naturally tried to breed them. But nothing about this lizard has been a textbook experience. This species here was a very tricky one to keep and to breed. The clues to breeding them successfully lay in this strange lizard's origins. There's your girlfriend back, mate. These guys, being from Eastern Europe, it gets cold in winter. It gets so cold, it snows. We don't get snow here in Sydney. We're a temperate zone. So even though we were cooling this animal down in Sydney, it only got to about 8 or 10 degrees Celsius. That just wasn't cold enough. After doing more research, we decided to get them really cold. So we put them in a couple of enclosures and we literally put them in a fridge on site and set that to four degrees Celsius. Started to warm them up after two and a half weeks, put them together, bang, we got mating. Now this is the result of our successful mating, breeding and hatching, our young shelter pusics. Now our female laid six eggs. We got 100% hatching rate, so we got six baby shelter pusics out of those. We kept several of them here at the zoo and the others were distributed through zoos around the country. So this little guy will be fully grown in approximately three to four years. They have a longevity of over 30 years, so they're quite a long-lived reptile. And we hope that she goes on to breed and, and, and have many babies as well, just like her mum did. This really was the result of a lot of hard work with a lot of our reptile keepers. And the day that that first little head sort of hatched out of the egg was one of the most excited times I've ever been as a reptile keeper. Being a little guy like this, I don't want to keep him out and exposed for very long, so I'll put him back into his shelter, Pusik. And not too far away, another reptile keeper is also getting things ready for some new additions. But every birth in this room comes with the added pressure of saving an entire species. 